in green level, right? In green level, I'll show you where this is going to go because we haven't got much time, right? Green level, your job's to get me off the court. See if you can work out what's different about green level. Look out. I'm a bit deadly with this. Right. Justin. No, it's get me off the court. Homer Simpson. Sorry. Oh, rubbish. Okay, what's different about green level? Yeah, hang on, what, what's happened? So the first drill, what, yeah, you've got to think about it. So in the last drill, he was trying to get me, he was trying to get me off the court. On this drill, is he trying to get me off the court? Yes. yes. So nothing's changed there. But what has changed? So I'm, well actually I'm trying to centre the ball so he doesn't have so many angles, but I'm struggling with my little racket. But, so in other words, in green, there's a defensive element to this as well. You see? So in, in orange, because in his world in orange, he's still thinking about himself. I'm going to get him off the court. So that is you anyway, isn't it? Right? Yeah? Right? But in, you see how in green we teach the other one? So in green we're not just going to teach the offensive one, we're going to teach the defensive one as well. So Mike, would, would defense in orange be a, a could? It would be, it would be a, a, if you've got three times a week you're going to teach the defense bit as well. The problem is the kid in orange is not naturally thinking about who they're playing against, how to beat them. They're, they're sort of trying to do their own thing. They're a bit still focused at their end of the court. But again, it's like, okay, so Tony's going, yeah, my red kids can't change the direction of the ball. Now you're telling me my green kids, yeah, practice these. Don't practice anything without it being associated with a pattern that you want to try and establish where you want to get to. See? Um, the other things you might, you might want to do is, there's, there's a few different kind of uh, reception tasks that you really should work on. I still see a lot of kids in orange and green who don't receive the ball particularly well. All right? So, um, oh, sorry, I forgot one drill, real fast. Get up the other end. This is how we always practice serve in orange. Well, one of the drills we practice. Stand on the baseline. No, orange baseline. To return, ready to return. Cross your legs. You're not allowed to move. Okay? So basically, he's now part of the target. Because you get a lot of kids that think, you know what? It's about hitting it hard. How hard can I hit it? Instead of actually, can I place it in such a place that he can't get to it? So we make the returner stand still, and he's got to go there or there, so that the kid thinks about the what the ball's doing to the returner, not where the ball lands. Because fundament, like my slice serve and the juice court, I can make the ball land here, but you won't be outside the alley. I don't have enough slice on it. Somebody else can make the ball land here as well and can put the ball over there by the camera, the player over there by the camera. So where it lands isn't the only fundamental, is it? Where it lands ultimately becomes the thing that, just one of my targets. I have a secondary target which is more important, which is moving my opponent, all right? Okay, let's go back to where we were. All right, so the other thing we want to try and do is obviously we want to practice coming to the net. All right, go on. Only if I have them for six hours a week. It's your choice. Your choice, it's up to you. I don't teach them serve and volley, no. No, no, we're going to teach them this. We're going to teach them, because you said approach. I'm not going to teach them serve and volley because I think it's a long way to go. I am going to teach them that if I'm here, I go cross court. If I'm here, I'll go down the line. If I'm here, you said it already, I'm going to approach. So I'm going to teach very effective approach in orange, 
right? So if you go, if you give me a short ball, right? If he gives me a short ball, okay, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use classic down the line, come in and volley to the space. That's gonna be my pattern I'm gonna practice. You break the pattern down, can I go down the line on that side? Can I go down the line on that side? If you want to teach him serve and volley, teach him serve and volley. You ask me if I teach him serve and volley. I'm not God. I'm just a tennis coach. Yeah, okay, I'm not, if, look, look, I said this right at the start. You've got to write, there isn't a perfect solution to this. If you want to teach your, like I was, where are you from originally? Okay, from Mumbai. I was in Mumbai, right? So I was in Mumbai, all right? And when I was in Mumbai, I went there and I was working with Aita, all right? And, and they went, you know what? We love this. So I went, why do you like it? Because most Indians are actually small. Yeah, they said, most Indians are not, not Russians, right? They're not like this big. They said, most Indians are small. And most Indians are very, very good with their hands. That's why they create great doubles players. It's part of the culture, you know, a lot of the things that happens, right? So they went, this gives us the chance to really craft things and be really smart. If they want to teach like that, that's great. If you want to teach serve volley, great. If somebody else wants to teach, you know, a certain way, fine, great. Go ahead and do it. I'm not, I'm not, you just ask me, do I teach serve and volley? We play a lot of doubles. They kind of do serve and volley in doubles in orange, but I don't really teach it. But equally, I don't teach crossover step or split step. No, it's not. What's, what's, what's that? No, okay. There's two things you need to understand. First thing, right, orange here, you can traditionally approach. Now remember, that I struggled with the depth. Most kids are going to struggle with it. They are going to get short balls. The movement pattern was forwards. We are going to go to the net, just not necessarily behind the serve, because the serve's not that strong. Right? In fact, in orange, most kids return. Return is more of a weapon than the serve for most kids. Right? So most kids probably would hit a return and come in more than they'd hit a serve and come in. So we're going to teach a traditional approach. Right? In other words, short ball. Short ball. Okay, I get a short ball. I'm going to come in down the line. Okay, and then I'm going to volley cross court. All right? Okay. Interestingly, so we go back to your moon ball -y thing. When I go to green, that doesn't work quite so well. And what you have to do is you have to add a shot before. So when we go green, you keep coming down here. It's, it's all on camera, don't worry about it. You organized it. Okay. So when we go green, right, just watch this. No, no, hold on, watch this, right? When we go green, if I want to come to the net, right, if I want to come to the net, I've got to do this. I've got to get him, sorry, right over there, and then I can come to the net behind that. Sorry, bad execution, but you get the idea. What I've actually got to do is push my opponent right off balance, get him at full stretch in order to be able to come to the net because I'm still this big, yeah? And if I come to the net behind a traditional approach, though I would, it's too easy to be lobbed or passed. So I effectively have to learn a shot before that. See that? Now remember, none of this is Mike talking, this is just what the kids have worked out. This is the kids have worked out, right, you know what? If I wanna come to the net, and I wanna come to the net, if I stay on the baseline for five shots, I get a nosebleed. Right? If I, I literally, oh, not gonna work. That one will, get that one. Okay. All right, okay. But, so, I'm actually, I'm teaching more net craft than you think. I'm teaching the net craft beyond the level of most players because you, the drill's called run, boy, run. And if we break it down, what we actually do is, so you start right over there in the corner. Green ball, is that green? So literally our, he starts right over there. Stop. 
right? And then I go this. Run. It's called run, boy, run. Okay? So literally we start like that, and then there's a drill before that. Okay, hold on. Right, and I learned that that's the only time I can come to the net, otherwise I will get passed. So now what's the drill before that? Hit which shot? No. Nope. The drill before that is get him off the court. I have to, so you see how this whole construction is made up of a series of different things that you gradually build. And you have to practice each one. And then you put, but you know where you're going. Yeah? The whole basis of this every time, Isu come this end, is you have to know where you're going. It's like, um, it's like this one. If you've ever done the number one, think of a number between one and nine. Have you ever done that? Okay, so don't tell us the answer if you've ever done it, right? You ready? So, think of a number between one and nine. Any number you choose. Got your number? Good, all right. I'd like you to multiply it by nine now. Okay, tough this time in the afternoon. No lunch, right? Now, with your number, add the two digits together. Yeah, add the two digits together, right? Yeah, okay, right. And then let's take away the number one, two, three, four. Take away five from that number, yeah? Uh, now, give your number a letter. So, if it's number one, it's A. If it's number two, it's B. If it's three, it's C, if it's four, it's D, if it's five, it's E, six, it's F, like that, yeah? And uh, in case you had noticed, I'm a European. So think of a European country beginning with that letter. Got a European country? Yeah. All right, okay, now let's take the second. All right, take the second letter of that country and think of a four-legged animal. Any four-legged animal you like. Yeah, got a four-legged animal now? Yeah, okay, so your elephant, is it African or Indian? What did you have then? You can't do maths, right? All right, because basically, basically, there's a, whole series of, there's a whole series of things, but we know where we're going. You see what I'm trying to say? There's all these practices, but ultimately, basically the way you do it, think of a number between one and nine, multiply it by nine, add the two digits together, it always equals nine. Take away five and give it a letter, you now have a D. There's only one country in Europe beginning with D, that's Denmark. Second letter is E, and if you ask anybody to think of a four-legged animal beginning with E, unless they think it's the end of the puzzle, they all think of elephant, apart from Canadians who go for elk, right? <laughs> all right, so, so basically what I'm saying is everything we're doing has this process that we're thinking about. We're not just going on and going, hit a forehand. We're working on an angle, we're working on a height, we're working on a redirect, we're working on everything works in a certain way to try and help us to arrive at where we want to get to. All right? And at each stage, it's going to take us a year. The difference between the drill at orange and the drill at green is a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe even longer. All right? And you're going to break it down and practice all those bits. But every drill you practice has to have intention. And there's no intention between behind a forehand. We don't practice forehands. We practice uh, forehands cross court with height. We practice taking the ball early. Yeah, we might do a, the classic bounce hit drill. You know, where the ball comes in, you go bounce, hit, bounce, hit, and then bounce, hit, change the speed and height and all those kind of things. But everything we do is part of a process because now we can. Because when we taught with only yellow balls, I remember at one point, if you've been in coaching for long enough, we all taught with only yellow balls. Yeah, that's it, I, I'm 30 years a coach. I've been teaching with yellow balls for at least half of that, and only yellow balls for at least half of that. So guess what? We all told everyone, this is a forehand. And by the way, you know, you must finish your, with your, the side of your, you know, two and a half inches from the side of your face, not three inches from the side of your face. And your butt cap must go down like that. And you're, oh no, so hold, hold on a minute. Your, the angle of your elbow should be 47 degrees, and that moment it's 46 degrees. And your foot is turned out just too far, and the sh shoelaces should be pointing exactly to the net. Could you bend your front knee a little bit more? And oh, could you make a little bit more space between your, your index finger and the other fingers on your hand, just to make sure that you get around there? Oh, and could you tilt the other angle of your racket by five more, five more degrees? 
right? And then hit the ball, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere along there you hit the ball. We all talk like that. You know why? Because the kid couldn't rally. The kid couldn't play. And the kid certainly couldn't use their brain. All right? And so at the point we get to here, we now have an opportunity to make it easier. But easier doesn't mean teach less. Easier means teach more. It means I get to teach your kid more things in less time. I get to teach your kid to use their brain and use their intelligence. All right? So it should arrive at better tennis. What we're doing though, everyone gets obsessed with the ball and they go, we're going to move to the next ball because that's the next level of challenge. But they don't teach the kid anymore. They're still teaching the same way they were teaching before. Hit it. Hit it's not good enough. It's not going to win anything. Honestly, it never has. Right? You need a kid, and I've said this a couple of times, you need a kid to be able to play tennis at the level, the cognitive level, that they play a computer game. And I'm not advocating computer games by any stretch of the imagination. I don't want kids playing computer games. But computer games have a formula. Computer games are all about missions, solving problems, right? And the best computer game on, in the world is one where instead of using your thumbs, you get to run around a tennis court and do it, right? Where you solve problems, you achieve missions. And that's the way we have to teach this. And when we do teach it, it's very exciting. It is the coolest game on the planet. You get to solve problems, you get to work things out, you get to build weapons, yeah? You get to accept challenges. And you need to think about principles, like one of the principles we use is, have you ever played Call of Duty? Anyone ever played Call of Duty? How long was it before you got shot? Pretty sick, less than 10 seconds for most people, they get shot, right? What happened after you got shot? Oh, you my little nephew, what should you do? Right. You press the button, you go again. Right? You go again, you go again, you go again. Computer games provide ultimate failure over and over and over again. In fact, if you're ultimately successful, they bring out a new version. Right? Because everyone's finished. So this is exactly the same. This is all about problems. Yeah? It's why these guys are still playing. It's what stimulates them. It's not just hitting the ball. It's the fact that they can fully engage in using their brains. And going back to um, Americans, coach, right? Going back to Americans, I guarantee you this, right? Less than 1% of your kids are stupid. <laughs> Honestly, they are kids that do well at school. They're bright. They're well educated. They come from nice families. They have great personalities. You have great raw materials. But you've got to teach them to play a game using their brains. Because otherwise, if you just teach them to hit the ball, it's a bit dull. All right, um, that's all we have time for. And I did say we weren't going to get a lot done. We got quite a bit done. And I'm sorry if your brain feels like custard at this point. Right? Your mission now is this. You have to go away and start to think about those slides we had at the beginning. What would be in your program the things you want to achieve in red? The things you want to achieve. Start building a map. Okay? When we connect next time, you'll be able to tell me where you are with your map. Right? We might even have the opportunity to help you with your map. Okay? To help you engage with some of those things. So we're going to send you some resources. Uh, they do kind of have a map in them. So you'll be able to get those through Isu. He'll send those things out. Um, I think you can see with the, with the three hours I've got. I'm challenged to even get through half of this. There's so much stuff in this space. There's so much really cool stuff. And there's still really, really interesting stuff. It's just why I get, you know, I'm so passionate about this because I've got eight-year-olds doing stuff that I never thought my 14-year-olds could do. Yeah, because you have to really, really never underestimate these kids with these balls. When a kid's in the right environment with the right balls, they can play tennis way beyond anything we ever thought was possible. All right. Um, I'll leave it for Isu to work out how we connect in the future at other points. Um, I kind of come in and out. If I'm doing anything, I don't do a lot in New York and around the area other than the private club stuff I do. So um, if, if I am in, the, in space, I'll let you know. Um, and if there's other things that we're doing, I normally do 
PTR, I normally do that. Um, and so I'll, I'll be around. We might organize something in the north. We just did our conference at IMG last weekend down in Florida. Our plan next year is to do something up here in the north. It'll be colder, but we get more people. All right. And we get to work with you guys as well. Thank you much for your time and attention. Cause Can we uh, line up in the back of the curtain for a picture with Mike? Nice and tight.